the first thing I'm going to do is go to Mixamo and look for a jab. I'm going to use this animation called Lead Jab. Let's download it. And just like before, I'm going to drag it into the Unity folder. I'm going to go through the importing process, change it to humanoid, configure, turn it to T-bind pose, rename the animation, lead jab, apply, and get rid of the materials. Then I'm going to drag it into the animator. We need to assign a key for attack, so I'm going to go to the Virtual Input Manager, and I'm going to have something called attack, and I'm going to go through the other scripts, keyboard input, if input is return, meaning enter, then I want the virtual input manager to say attack is true. If not, attack is false. I also got to go into manual input and pretty much do the same thing. And of course, character control is not going to have a variable called attack. So I'm going to go in there and create a variable called attack. If I go back and play, whenever I press enter, the attack variable comes up as true. So it's working fine. Now I want to go ahead and create the transition from idle to lead jab. I'm also going to need the parameter here. I'm going to call it attack. And again, get rid of the exit time. And if attack is true, we go from idle to lead jab. And I want the transition to be short. Zoom in as much as you can and make it short. And then I'm going to go to the states and create a force transition ability. Name it player lead jab force transition. And I think I'm going to set it at 95%. Go to the lead jab state, add the behavior character state and add the ability and I also want the transition from lead jab back to idle go in there set up the transition get rid of the exit time and the condition is going to be force transition is true I'm gonna go into the state scripts folder and create a new ability a script rather, I'm going to call it attack, go in there, I'm going to pick another state just to copy paste, copy paste it into the attack, get rid of the previous code and change the name. Now we have a state called attack and on enter I want the animator to say attack is false and this is going to be a transition parameter I don't have an attack enum yet so go in there and create the enum I'm gonna go to idle and say if attack is true from the character controller I'm going to tell the animator to say attack is true. I'm 
So starting from the idle state, if you press enter, the attack parameter becomes true, which is going to take you to the attack state and then set the attack parameter back to false. So you can press attack again later when you go back to idle state. Let's now go back to Unity. And I'm going to create that new ability called attack. And I'm going to name it player lead jab. Go back to that state and add the ability. Now I got to look at the animation and tweak it a little bit. I don't want the entire animation. I just want the jab. Looks all right, so I'm going to click apply. And let's see what happens when we click play and press enter. Seems way too slow. Speed it up, maybe 1.8. Point seven five, maybe. Okay, looks about right, except I want the transition to happen a little sooner, so maybe at ninety percent, eighty seven percent. So want a quicker transition. That was too quick. Okay, looks all right. I'm also going to turn on foot IK. And I want the character to move forward a little bit as he throws a punch. So I'm going to create another ability called move forward. And I'm going to name it player lead jab move forward. Give it some speed, lock distance, 0 0.1 for now. And I want to set up the speed graph. I only want the character to move forward in the beginning part of the animation maybe up to about the beginning 30% maybe. Forty percent, fifty percent. Okay. Maybe something like this. Then add that ability as well. Move forward. I'm going to go into the move forward script. And I'm going to add an option to say, I just want the player to move no matter what. So I'm going to call it constant. And I'm going to organize the previous method into another method. And I'm going to call it control move I'm going to put all this into that method I also want the same parameters okay and if constant is true. I want the new function called constant move. Again, taking the same parameters. 
So if you so if you toggle constant, you're gonna move in a certain way. If not, we move like we did before, which is moving with the keyboard. And pass on the parameters. Same thing here. And if we want constant movement, all we got to do is check the forward part, check front of the player. And then if there's nothing in front, then we just move forward. So I'm going to copy paste this here. This is a script that moves a character forward. So I'm going to save, go back to Unity. And for the jab move forward, I'm going to toggle constant. If I click play, the walking part should remain the same. But if I press enter, the character is now moving forward. I'm going to tweak it. Maybe five is too much. Three. I'm going to make it four and adjust the curve. So 50% is way too much. 35%. And change the keys. Something like this. What the hell? Well, I gotta set this to zero. So value is going to be zero here. Okay. Maybe 25%. I like that a little better. I think the animation speed is a little too fast. So 1.6. Force transition is going to be at 75%. Okay. A little quicker transition. Looks all right for now. The feed here looks a little funny, but we'll do the fine tuning later on. So let me exit play mode. I'm going to move the cube to the side. You can press V and have the vertex snapping. I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to create a dummy character, which is real easy. First, I got to duplicate this, control D, move it to a different position, and drag it into a folder. And it's going to be an original prefab. I'm going to rename the prefab, call it dummy name it here as well dummy and the only difference is that I'm going to turn off the manual input that means I'm only going to be controlling this character and this character is just going to stand still if I turn on manual control manual input then they both move exactly the same so turn it off now we have a dummy character Exit play mode, and let's click apply. And nothing to apply for the suited man. Let me save the scene and click play again. I think there's a slight glitch in the move forward script. Let me go to move forward and take a look. 
First, let me streamline the code a little bit. If control ragdoll parts includes contains the collider. Or if the list does not contain the collider, then we return true. And we don't have to do all this. We don't need the self variable anymore either. Okay. It's the exact same code, just written in a shorter way. Let me click play and make sure that it's working fine. Let me check the cube. Okay. I want to make sure that the raycast does not take into consideration the body part colliders. I only want the raycast to respond to this cube. So I'm going to go to move forward and I'm going to create a method called his body part that takes in the collider as a parameter. First, I'm going to look at the character control that is attached to the collider. The root of the collider, get component, character control. And if it's not null, or if it's null, first of all, if it's null, that means it's not a body part, so return false. But if it's not null, you want to make sure that it's not in the list of the ragdoll parts. In that case, you return true, otherwise return false. So even if the front raycast hits something in front, we want to make sure that it's not a body part. And that's the only time we return true for check front. If the collider is the character control itself, then we return false. This means that it's not a body part, it's the root of the character. This should be false. And let me go back and play. Okay, looks good. I also want to test it against the cube. And everything looks fine. So the forward raycast will only respond to the outer box collider here, or to a simple physical object that is not a player. So we have the dummy and the animation. The next video will be about detecting the collision for the punch. Thanks for watching.